This video is about healthy eating with gestational diabetes. What is gestational diabetes? When carbohydrate is eaten, the body converts this into glucose, which is also known as sugar. This glucose then enters the bloodstream and a hormone called insulin is then released from your pancreas to help this glucose move into your tissues and cells in your body to be used as energy. In gestational diabetes, however, the pancreas does not produce enough insulin for the glucose to be moved into the cells and this can cause a high level of sugar in the blood. We know that the amount of sugar in the blood can be managed with a good healthy balanced diet. Sometimes medications are also needed to help with this. So this is the Eat Well Guide. This is a guide for what we should be eating as part of a healthy balanced diet, which would be ongoing and not just what we would have at one meal time. So we have the, the large section on the right side, that's the yellow section, that's our starchy carbohydrates, so things like potato, bread, cereal, pasta, rice, all comes under that section. We then have another large section on the left side, which is the fruit and vegetables in the green section. The pink section is our proteins, which is meat, fish, beans, pulses and other proteins. We have the blue section which is the dairy and dairy alternatives, so things like milk, cheese, soya, yogurt, oils and spreads, very small slither on the guide because we need them but only in very small amounts. We also have on the outside of the guide is the sweet treats and sauces because they provide very little nutritional value so they're not needed as part of a healthy balanced diet but we still like to acknowledge that we like the occasional treat. Carbohydrates then. Carbohydrates are made of sugar. They're found as simple sugars so sweets, table sugar, fruit and dairy and then we have the more complex carbohydrates so the starchy fruits, the bread, potato, rice, pasta, they are all made of sugar but they are just broken down at different speeds. Carbohydrates are our body's preferred source of energy, they're broken down into glucose to be used as fuel in the body. The levels of glucose in the blood are what we are trying to control with gestational diabetes but as I said it is our body's preferred source of energy so we don't want to over restrict as well. Good carbohydrate options include whole grain options such as brown rice, whole grain bread, buckwheat, whole oats and pasta. Portion sizes are going to be really important here because we want to have carbohydrate at every main meal but we want to monitor our portion sizes. So for example a portion size would be two slices of whole grain bread or three to four egg sized new potatoes or half to one cup of cooked rice, pasta or couscous or 30 grams of cereal. We want to include one portion of carbohydrate at every main meal and then have a low carbohydrate snack between meals to prevent overeating at the main meals. Fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetables are a good source of vitamins, minerals and fibre. They are very low in energy and therefore help to assist with weight management. We want to aim to have more vegetables than fruit. This is because fruit has sugar in it. So we want to be mindful of how much fruit you have in one go and space this out throughout the day as well. In terms of vegetables, you want to aim for half your plate of vegetables. Fresh, frozen, dried and canned all count as a portion. Fresh and frozen are ideal. We want to watch out for the dried and canned though because they can contain much more sugar. In terms of the canned, they can sometimes be in syrup so it would be important to wash the syrup off if you do prefer canned. It's also important to limit fruit juice and smoothies to a maximum of 150 millilitres per day. This is because they are particularly high in sugar due to the high quantities of fruit that's compressed into one glass. A portion guide for vegetables. So a portion is 80 grams. This is the equivalent of three heaped tablespoons of cooked veg. So carrots, peas, cauliflower, kidney beans or one small bowl or cup of salad. For fruit, one portion is 80 grams, which would be the equivalent of one medium orange, a firm banana or apple, two mandarin, plums, apricot, or 10 grapes, one tablespoon of dried fruit, half a medium fruit, for example, mango or avocado. 
again we want to avoid fruit juice dried fruit and fruit smoothies or shakes because they are much higher in sugar so protein protein is essential for building and repairing tissue immune function and maintaining muscle mass we want to have two to three portions of protein foods daily ideally one piece of protein at each main meal they're a great way of bulking up your meal without increasing your blood sugar levels. As part of a healthy balanced diet, we would recommend choosing more lean meats and trimming the fat off as well. One portion of protein would include 80 grams of meat, 120 grams of fish, two eggs, 30 grams of nuts, 100 grams of tofu or corn, and three to four tablespoons of pulses, beans, or chickpeas. A portion of protein as a guide would be a deck of cards. Dairy. Dairy is a main source of calcium and it is vital for your baby's bones and teeth and also yours as well. We want to try and include three portions of calcium rich foods daily to enable you to get your calcium intake. So an example of a portion of dairy is 200 mils of milk or 150 grams of yogurt or 30 grams of cheese which is similar to a small matchbox size. If you don't have dairy and have non-dairy foods that contain calcium that would include the list on the right side we just want to be mindful of the organic dairy alternatives because they don't contain any calcium in them so it will be important to choose the fortified options instead oils and spreads we want to try and keep to small amounts as part of a healthy balanced diet they are high in calories and it's better to choose plant-based unsaturated fats we would recommend a teaspoon of oil per person in terms of margarine a thin spread so mid-meal snacks we recommend having snacks in between your meals to prevent overeating at main meals but we want these snacks to be low in carbohydrates so good examples are on the list here for example 125 gram pot of low sugar low fat yogurt a piece of fruit one small bag of baked crisps or a handful of unsorted nuts again watch your portion sizes because overeating any one thing can cause weight gain too going over the portion sizes for your plate you'd want to aim to have half your plate of your, your salad or your vegetables quarter of your plate of your carbohydrates and a quarter of your plate of your protein in terms of beverages some drinks can be very high sources of sugar so we want to be mindful of what drinks we're choosing good drinks will include water herbal teas decaf or naturally caffeine free and a maximum of four cups of herbal tea a day decaf coffee or tea flavor your own water with something like cucumber lemon or mint have sparkling water sugar-free squashes or diet fizzy drinks you can also use artificial sweeteners instead of sugar. We want to minimize the amount of caffeine, so it's recommended to have no more than 200 milligrams of caffeine a day, which is the equivalent of two mugs of regular tea and one can of diet cola, or one mug of coffee and one can of diet cola. Alcohol should be avoided completely during pregnancy. The drinks to specifically avoid would be energy drinks because they are high in sugar and can have a high caffeine content too. Regular sugary drinks and regular fizzy drinks, high in sugar and sometimes caffeine as well. They will include things like cola, Dr Pepper, Mountain Dew, and also limit fruit juices and smoothies as mentioned previously. They are high in sugar. Watch out for drinks that say no added sugar as they can still naturally contain a lot of sugar and this is misleading sugar-free squashes and sugar-free drinks can be a good alternative we want to be mindful of what we're eating when we're eating out because the portion sizes can vary so for example fish and chips can be high in fat so order a small or share a portion of chips try to make your own chips remove the batter from the fish burgers go chipless or go bunless but don't have both Indian or Chinese can be high in fat and sugar, have rice or naan, chapati over naan, stir fry options, avoid creamier sauces, go for drier dishes like tikka or have soup as a starter. Overall foods to avoid during pregnancy, avoid raw and partially cooked eggs that are not British lion marked and dishes containing these, 
soft mold ripened cheeses including camembert, brie, soft blue cheeses such as Danish blue, gorgonzola, shark, marlin, swordfish, liver and liver products. Also we recommend to avoid diabetic foods. They're expensive and they don't provide any special health benefits and they also may cause an upset stomach. Vitamins, we recommend to take 500 micrograms of folic acid for those with diabetes every day until 12 weeks of your pregnancy and also we recommend all adults including pregnant women to take vitamin d 10 microgram supplement every day and throughout your pregnancy do not take supplements containing vitamin a as this can harm your baby at meal times remember to reduce your carbohydrate portion sizes choose whole grain options bulk up your meal with vegetables, add protein to your meals, switch your jam spreads to nut based spreads or olive oil spread, have one glass of water, tea, coffee, flavoured sparkling water or sugar free squashes. Weight gain and exercise. Try not to lose weight during pregnancy. If you have made changes to your diet to cut out high calorie foods, you may naturally lose some weight. You only need an extra 200 calories a day in the last three months, which is equivalent to two slices of bread. So unfortunately, eating for two is a myth. Exercise improves the body sensitivity to insulin and helps control blood glucose levels. If you're trying something new though, speak to your GP or midwife. So the main points to follow, follow a healthy balanced diet, choose from the main food groups, monitor your portion sizes, especially the carbohydrates, Focus on having carbohydrates with each meal and low carbohydrate snacks between meals. Include a protein source and vegetables and salad with your meals. Limit your intake of high sugar, high fat foods and drinks. We have other videos for diet and gestational diabetes, food labelling and glycemic index diet, so please check these out too. Thank you for listening.